Hello everyone! So today I will show you how to create a Rubik's Cube in Blender. I already did that on Skillshare on my beginner course. It is an easy object to model, so it's very suitable for beginners. But I will go way faster in, in this YouTube tutorial and I will show you all the process right now. So I will use the default scene, I will select the cube and I will go into the edit mode. I will go into the face select mode and I would like to insert the face, so I will press I and it doesn't work yet, I will press I again to insert individual faces and I will insert just a tiny bit. I would like to extrude those faces inside, so I'll press Alt E and I will extrude faces along normals. I will extrude it inside not too much, just a little bit and uh, I will insert the faces again. Now I need to press I only one time because I already have selected that I am inserting individual faces and I will extrude the space back again. So Alt E, extrude faces along normals and let's extrude it back. So I have this shape, this thing around the part of the Rubik's Cube where the colors is. So next I will add, I will go into the object mode and add the subdivision surface modifier. Uh, however, I will add it by shortcut, I will press Ctrl 2 and that will add a subsurface modifier with two levels of subsurface. I get back to the edit mode because that doesn't look very good, I will select all by pressing A and I will subdivide it. It's better, right? And I think I need one more subdivision, so I will subdivide once more and uh, that looks quite good. I kind of like it, uh, I'll shade it smooth and it is quite smooth. We have those edges, uh, we can add three levels of subdivision and that will fix it. Uh, however, in my viewport I will keep two and I will add one in the render. So I will have a better quality render but uh, it won't lag my viewport that much. Okay, so we have a basic shape of the one part of Rubik's Cube detail and uh, now I will add the colors. Let's go into the material tab. We have the first material. I don't bother with the naming, but you can name it properly. First, I will add the color for the base of the cube and uh, I will, will make it black because usually it's black and I will change the roughness to 0.7, around that number. And we don't see anything, so I'll go into Materials tab, Material Preview tab actually, and we have it black. So now I would like to add the colors to all the faces around the cube, so I make sure that you are in face select mode, uh, press one in the corner, Control shift and another corner that will select all the face and I would like to select all of those edges so I'll press Control and plus and once more because we subdivided two times so now we selected all the right faces and let's go to material tab create new material and um, let's make it red let's start from red and the roughness 0.7 and we need to assign and now we have a red material. Let's create another one, same process. Uh, I'll make this, I need more space. So new color, let's make it green, uh, roughness 0.7, assign. Let's make this one, this one, control shift, control plus plus, and let's make, let's make a new material. I, I assigned before changing the color, but that's fine. We can make it blue, 
don't know, maybe this kind of blue. It doesn't matter that much. We will be able to change that later. What else? Okay, what other colors do we have? We have yellow, right? So create new. Let's search for yellow. Um, roughness. 0 0.7 assign we have white I think yeah so uh -huh. new white and change the roughness we already set it as white assign and only one left so this is going to be orange whoa this one con shift control plus plus and make it new and let's make it orange orange something like that make roughness 0 0.7 and assign that's it we have the colors that's looking great i will get back into the object mode awesome so i will select this and I will get back to modifiers and I will add the array modifier with count of three and I will duplicate this modifier and I will keep everything the same. I will just change the factor. Uh, I will make X factor zero and Y factor is one and that will add another array modifier on the Y axis and I need another one on the Z. So I'll duplicate this and uh, I'll change this to zero and this one to one. That's it, we have Rubik's Cube, we are done. Now we make it look better. We will create some kind of a scene with better lighting because now lighting sucks, it's default lighting. So move this a little bit out but before that if i'm in the object mode if and if i would like to rotate my cube it rotates very weirdly because my origin is in the corner i would like it to be in the center of the cube so we can do that it's not that hard i would like to set up the cursor to the center of the cube and then i will add the origin to to the center uh, to do that, we need to apply the array modifier. We are not going to change anything, so we can press this and apply or Control A. So I will press Control A on both. And now we have the cube, which is made from the mesh. So we can select A and P to separate and separate by loose parts. And now we have a bunch of cubes. Here you can see we have 27, it should be 27, yeah, 27 cubes. And uh, if I get back to the object mode, I can hide this by pressing H. I can select this cube, press tab, select all by pressing A. And now I can press Shift S and cursor to select it. And now my cursor is in the center of a cube. Uh, I can get back into the object mode. I can, um, what I can do, I can press Alt H to get back this cube which we hidden. And now we can select all of those cubes uh, by selecting, by pressing A. We can deselect the camera. I'll actually delete those objects before working. Now we are in a way a little bit. An object set origin to 3D cursor. And now my world origin at all of those cubes are in the center. And that's great. I don't know why I deselected because I need to select them all. And I need to select one cube at last. And I can press Ctrl J to join them into one object again. So this is one object again, and it has the origin at the center. So that's great. Let's create the scene. I'll press Shift S, and now I would like to move the cursor to world origin. So now it's in the center. And now if I press Shift A and plane and S, 
do, do. now it is in the center now i would like to move the cube a little bit up and i would like it to be on the plane that is looking good and now i would like to find the right angle for my camera so maybe something i don't know maybe something like that maybe it's a, a little bit lower and we can press ctrl alt and zero and now my camera snaps into this position for now let's keep it that way maybe let's suggest this plane that we created and let's add the material for this plane okay so let's go into materials new let's make it all dark all black and change the roughness to the max so it's great i'll select all to see my camera and i will scale my camera a lot i would like to see it a little bit better it doesn't change anything this object will be bigger but it won't change anything in the viewport i'll change my this plane i will rotate it a little bit and i will move it to here and i will make the back a little bit i'll go back into the edit mode edge select mode extrude it on the z axis i'll select this edge press ctrl b to bevel and i will bevel something like that in the object mode i will shade it smooth and we have it so it looks good and now i would like to add lighting because we have this default light that we had from the start and i don't like it that much i would like to add an hdri and if we go into the shading menu i uh, can change this also to the render view and if we go into the world we have this world gray color which we can change anytime but i would like to add an hdri so i will add an environment texture and uh, i'll map it here you can download hdris for example from polyhaven that's a great source i downloaded this um, downloads shanghai scene from there uh, i think it fits with scene and now we have the lighting from all of the sources sources i'll press ctrl t to add more mapping options for for my scene if you if ctrl t doesn't work for you go to the edit uh, preferences add-ons search for node wrangler and make sure that you enabled it Eevee has a problem that uh, environment texture HDRI do not cast any shadows on the scene. So I will change to the cycles right now. I'll make a little bit of adjustments. I will change the view samples to 256 and render samples. I don't need that much. So 512 and that should be good. Uh, of course, I will enable GPU and i will change the noise to optics i don't want to forget this so that's great we have all the settings and now we have the shadow and we added this mapping to control it basically so if i change this z rotation i can change my shadow so i would like it to to go like that and that's good if i go into my camera view it looks quite good great so i would like i get back to my layout settings and now i would like to add more cubes two more in the background to make the scene more interesting so i think i will enable another view so this is going to be my camera view how everything looks in the camera and with the camera I'll move it a little bit. I like to move camera by using walk navigation, view navigation and walk navigation. I added it to my quick favorites. If you want to do the same, so you can press right mouse button and add to quick favorites. 
I already have it. So if I press Q, I have fly and walk navigation and I use that a lot in my camera and adjust my camera. I love it. So I have this view. I will look at it mostly from the top view. And here I will look from my camera. I'll move this a little bit closer. I don't want those clippings. And I will duplicate the cube by using Alt D. So I'll move this cube to somewhere here. Alt D another here. I will delete this lamp. I don't need it right now. Uh, those cubes look the same. So I'll rotate it. I'll rotate it on x-axis at 90 degrees uh, and probably I'll rotate it on y-axis at 90 degrees and now it looks a little bit different it has the same colors so we can rotate it on z-axis at one, 180 degrees and we can do the same with this we can rotate it on y-axis at 180 degrees and probably rotate it on z-axis at minus 90 degrees that might be a little bit too much of the green but it should be fine and now i would like to add some light behind behind those cubes to make it more interesting so i'll add the point light i will move it behind this cube i'll probably need to move a little bit higher and uh, if we go to the lamps into light settings we can increase the power by a lot to something like 500 and the color to to something bluish and oh i made only 50s and 500 is not enough let's make it 5000 5000 we already see that something happening uh, I think 5,000 is too much. Let's decrease it to 3,000. Uh, maybe 1,500. Yeah, 1,500. That looks good. Uh, and I will move it a little bit to the side. And I will duplicate it by Shift D. And I will move it here. And I will add another one here to have the sliding set up. I think that looks quite good and uh, I would like to add a little bit lighting which faces this this cube so I'll add uh, the area light rotate it a little bit I'll move it up maybe not that much rotation I'll move it somewhere here and I will increase the power to 1500 and color to again something bluish and i think i needed to increase to 3000 and increase the size a little bit and make it in a disc i think i need to increase the power even more to 5000 maybe 10000 we can try 10000 and see how it works now it is lighting but it's too much i uh, will make it 5000 and i will duplicate it shift d i'll move it here i will rotate it to the cube and i will change the color to opposite something orangey something like that and now we have those nice colors from here and from here move it a little bit closer probably that was really quick setup and that looks quite good object is very simple but the lighting makes it look interesting so we can press f12 and render it i hope you learned something new in this tutorial and if you would like to learn more about uh, the blender check out my skillshare courses on Skillshare I go a little bit slower and I explain everything in detail. So it is perfect for beginners who want to learn Blender. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.